XFL championship game in two weeks. Rain's not going to dampen their spirit here. They're going to feed the snake and hope for a win and a trip to San Antonio. Here's a look at the playoffs. Arlington was seven and a half point underdogs yesterday in Houston. They won outright at Bob Stoops team playing its best ball of the season at the most important time. Their opponent will be determined over the next three hours here in D.C. Two meetings already this season between Seattle and D.C. Down 18 to eight early. D.C. fought its way back to win in week one in a four-point thriller. Then in week eight, it was a shootout. 548 total yards, seven touchdowns. Ben DiNucci was sacked to end the game once again. And D.C. won a 34-33 game and swept the regular season series. With that, we welcome you to our nation's capital. Tom Hart alongside Greg McElroy. We've got Katie George and Cole Kublik down on the field. These are the two best offenses in the league. Seattle the best passing offense. D.C. the best running offense. Two very different offenses. And if you look at D.C., their team that really wants to ground and pound, they want to run the football, and they have the best back in the XFL in Abram Smith. And knowing the conditions, knowing that it's wet ball, the rushing attack for D.C. might have a little bit of an advantage over the June Jones run-and-shoot offense led by Ben DiNucci for the Seattle Sea Dragons. Should be a lot of fireworks, two incredibly good teams on both sides of the ball. DiNucci, the one-time Cowboys starter, led the league in passing, but it's going to be soggy out there today. For more on that, he's with Katie George right now. Thanks, Tom. Ben, the two times that you guys played these guys in the regular season, you came up just short. What needs to be the difference today? Five points in two games. Uh, conditions, whatever's going on out here, we need to take care of the ball, score points when we get down in the red zone, and uh, our defense keep playing the way they've been playing the last two weeks. We should be good. Now, if this beautiful rain persists, what's your focus working with a wet ball? Uh, I grew up in it. I'm from Pittsburgh. We played in Seattle five times this year, so uh, business as usual for us. We're going to come out, chuck it around a little bit, and see if we can uh, light the scoreboard up. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Cole? Well, I'm with Greg Williams, defensive coordinator for the defenders, who's going to be trying to slow him down. Playoffs, quarterback that you've already seen two times this season. Do you just unleash hell today? Everybody does, does know who I am, right? Yes, we will. And uh, can't wait to get out there and get going. Our guys have bought into everything we do, and hell will come. Now, you're coaching with a little bit of a heavy heart today. I saw your chart a few moments ago. You showed it to me. Uh, how, how difficult is this going to be for you to just be out here and stay focused today? Well, your question made me think about him, my father-in-law, as you see, in memory of uh, Mike Shannon right here, passed away last night. And uh, he would be very upset with me if I go soft. He would be very upset with me. And, you know, when I was the uh, – uh, head coach of the Cleveland Browns. He came to every game, and he and Jim Brown was set in the back of the room and laugh if I appeared soft. So we're not going to be soft. Mike's in a better place right now. No more pain. He's with his wife. And uh, I'll be coaching today in memory of him, yes. He'd be proud, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all of you all. That's Mike Shannon, the longtime voice of the St. Louis Cardinal and former Cardinal. His daughter, Dr. Aaron Shannon, and Greg Williams got married years ago. We are ready to go, and we get you all access all the time in the XFL. Damn, that one soaked. Woo! Hey, we came here for one reason, win. Let's leave this bitch with a win. Win on three. One, two, three. Win. Let's go. Let's communicate. Let's over-communicate today. You know what I mean? And it's playoff time. No, no penalties, no discipline, no flags. You feel me? Let's get it. Let's get it, y'all. I believe in you guys. We started off 0-2. You fought your way back in. We've been fighting our way the whole time. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't hold nothing back today, man. Don't hold nothing back. Good energy, all right? Good energy. Run to the ball. Take care of the ball. And just play your ass off, man. And if you don't remember anything else, now, air possession. Air possession. Air possession. Air possession. <laughs> And so here we go, a trip to the XFL championship on the line at Audi Field in D.C. The defenders 9-1 on the season. And Seattle, as Jim Haslett mentioned, started the year 0-2. They come in at 7-3. The winner gets Arlington in two weeks for the title. Matt McCrane will get us started. You haven't watched the league yet this year. You need kickoff coverage rules. Receiving team lined up at the 30. Coverage team five yards away. Nobody can move to the ball is touched by the receiver. And here we go from the 15. And a little bit of room to the outside. And the Sea Dragons will come out with the league's best passing offense led by 
Ben DiNucci. You mentioned he's a Pittsburgh native, played for the Panthers before eventually leaving after he lost his starting job and he reset records at James Madison, the CAA Offensive Player of the Year in 2019. Seventh round pick of the Cowboys, a one time starter on a Sunday night against the Eagles. Big personality, big arm, and a big game. Seattle starts five wide. Going for a screen, and it's dropped by Josh Gordon. Former All-Pro receiver with the Browns, second and ten. And Ben DiNucci, if you haven't watched him play, is so incredibly fun to watch. Now, you have to occasionally take the good in with the bad. He'll make some remarkable plays today. He has been, at times, a little careless with the football. He's had a handful of interceptions, especially when he gets in the opponent's red zone. But he's the most dynamic quarterback in the XFL and is very comfortable running this run-and-shoot offense. Second in the league in touchdown passes, first in the league in picks. And able to hit the slant to Jawan Green. They have a ton of weapons at the wide receiver position. And here's third and one. But they only have one active running back today. That's Phillip Lindsey. Going to throw it on third and one. Jump, jump, They'll jump, throw jump, it on please. third jump, and jump. inches. They do not care. Danucci's a great runner as well. He can beat with his legs. Sixth in the league in rushing yards. Looking for the slants. There it is. It's Gordon, and he goes up in the air for a gain of eight. Kentrell Bryce got him off his feet. And Josh Gordon, one of the biggest names in the XFL, a guy that, of course, had tremendous success at the highest level, former All-Pro, still has tremendous game at 31 years of age big body a lot of the damage that he'll do will be down the field tremendous at tracking the football on vertical routes and one that dc's defense is going to have to be very aware of every time they snap the football gordon coming off of a 115 yard game here's danucci showing his wheels and he got tracked down from behind a gain of only two fadal brown was with them stride for stride June Jones, the offensive coordinator for Seattle. Greg Williams calls the defense the for D.C. situations where every time Ben DiNucci hands it off, that's a win for the defense because he's so good at creating mismatches and getting the ball out of his hands quickly. But now he just needs his receivers to step up to give him some help. Bringing everybody. DiNucci slings it downfield, and it is caught! A first down for Jacor Pearson, the league's best receiver. There are two flags down in the backfield. Jersey. First down at the 30. So we're going to have to get this to the goal. Reggie Smith, the referee. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 38. Contact above the shoulders. Penalized half the distance to the goal. First down. Pressure look from Greg Williams defensively on third and nine. You can see the hands of the defender, Mitzi, up into the face. And how about the concentration on the catch for Jacor Pearson? Of course, Josh Gordon's the alpha on the outside, but man, on the inside, Jacor Pearson is so good with the ball in his hands. Not very long, only 5'8, but very active as soon as he catches it. Play action for the first time and incomplete, trying to find Gordon. Well defended by Santos Ramirez out of the University of Arkansas. Second down 10.
Field conditions likely to be an issue all afternoon. Jump, 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 jump. Here's the screen. It's Pearson, and he gets brought down by the first man. DeJuan Neal. Pearson has the most broken tackles for wide receiver in the league. Trips left, trips left up. 880 prop, divide. 880 prop, divide. Last time on third and long. All out pressure was brought by Greg Williams. And based on the look right now, you see all the defenders in the flat line across about six, seven yards off the ball. Looking like all out pressure again. opportunities for the Sea Dragons in this opening drive. When you see that flat top defense, you know as a quarterback, one of the defenders that's blitzing is yours. That's the guy that's going to be the back side. He's going to be on the left side of a right-handed passer. So you see Danucci drift a little bit away. Ball is just a touch wide. They're going to have to dial those blitz packages up. Be prepared for pressure all day long. Dominic Eberle Sneaks it through the upright from 33 yards out, and Seattle cashes in on its first possession. I play 59-yard drive, took over five minutes off the clock. XFL is brought to you by Progressive, the right call to protect your home and car. Pre-game game ball presentation. Thanks to Lieutenant General Jody J. Daniels, over 39 years of active and reserve service, currently the Chief of Army Reserve and Commanding General, U.S. Army Reserve Command. And fitting in our nation's capital, that the defenders are the home team here looking for a trip to the XFL Championship. Ben DiNucci on the chat tablet on the sideline, likely looking at all that pressure that Greg Williams brought. <laughs> and as he's coming to the sideline, he's yelling to June Jones, he's yelling at all the offensive players, hey, man, we're getting zero. Every time, zero coverage, meaning just all-out pressure. So you know what you're going to get from Greg Williams. Here's Puka Williams, Jr. Spins his way free. Puka in a foot race. And got taken down at the 35-yard line. Mikel Wright may have saved a touchdown. Puka Williams, Kansas Jayhawk. So much speed told us last week. And he's runs in the 4-3 range. We looked up his combine time. It was more like 4-4. Either way, beautiful spin move. And how about the tackle in the open field? Like you said, Tom, that might have saved him six points. 40 times are like fishtails. Yeah, Everybody embellishes a little. You get a little bit faster as you get older. Ready, ready. Take him. League's best rushing offense. League's best rusher. It's Abram Smith. And Baylor product taken down by Trey Walker for gain of one. Jordan Ta'amu is the D.C. quarterback. He was a star at Ole Miss in his brief time in Oxford. Then first time around in the league with the Battle Hawks, their starting quarterback. Thousand yards in five weeks of action. Ready, ready. Take off. 14 touchdowns on the season to Amu, and he finds his tight end. And Briley Moore's going to rumble all the way down inside the 10. They've been pass happy lately, and that one goes for 57 for more. It's a great job by Jordan Tom, who starts with his eyes into the flat, doesn't like it because that defender rushes up to guard that quick out route, which allows the tight end right around him. And Briley Moore catches it and does something with it as well. Nice throw and catch and a great read from the former Ole Miss Rebel. D.C. was run heavy the first seven weeks of the season. They lean more towards the pass later in the year. Abe Smith straight ahead. Gain of four. Jordan Tom is a tremendous story, too. We think about him coming out of New Mexico. Military Institute went to Ole Miss, was expected to be a career backup, ultimately beat out the five-star prospect in front of him and Shea Patterson. 
and the rest was history. He's now only gotten better and better and better as he's progressed throughout his professional career. Here's Smith again, trying to stretch it. Smith pursued and popped out of bounds at the five by Tyrell Adams. It's a loss of two. Phil, as I spoke to defenders, offensive coordinator Fred Kais before the game today, I said, Coach, I love your creativity in the red zone. He said, I have to. You have to find more plays, more options. He said, I have about 10 today, red zone plays, that is, that nobody has seen this year. About four or five that nobody's seen in five years. Mm. Well, this one is, is why mesh. So we've seen that one. Basically, you're going to get crossing routes by the tight end, try to create a natural pick, and hopefully one of your tight ends will be crossing wide open because of that mesh. More and Wolf, the tight ends. Here's Wolf off of his hands. Well defended by Adams, who's been in on the last two for Seattle. It was really well defended by Seattle. Usually as you're getting that those crossing routes, some of the defenders kind of run into each other. See the hand on the back there. Looks like Adams might have had a little bit of a grasp of the jersey, but either way, it was well covered and a great stand by Seattle defensively inside the red zone. 24-yard attempt from Matt McCrane. The two for two last week with the long of 49. That was indoors at San Antonio. Everything's good on this one. Well, teams have had a crack at it, and the defenses have come up big when it's mattered the most. We're tied at three early on. The snake just starting. That's right, and they've been true to form early. Straight zero on third down. Both third down, zero. Hey, I got him, I got him bided to the inside on divide. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give him like an upstep. Okay, that's fine, it's zero. I'm throwing yeah. the prop. Yeah. I just need everything you got for, that's all. I'm working it too. And defenses are named because of how many safeties are deep. So you have two high, that means there's two safeties back. One high, there's one safety back. Well, when it's zero, there's zero safeties back there, meaning it's all out pressure. And he's talking with his receivers how quickly he's got to get through his progression, knowing they are overloading his protection every single third down. Here's Kelvin McKnight returning for Seattle. And another spin, but we got a flag down back at the 29-yard line. Reggie Smith, our referee. Not the big line. I'm yeah. not sure oh. where you are, Marcus. I don't know. I don't know what a good spot is. Go back here, Jay. I got number nine. Oh. Oh. Nine of the receiving team. Flags in a good spot. Ten from here. During the return, holding. Receiving team number nine. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. These two teams fighting for a berth in the XFL Championship coming your way in two weeks, May 13th. Primetime, 8 Eastern on ABC and ESPN Deportes. Arlington awaits the winner. The Renegades get three touchdowns and 289 yards from Luis Perez yesterday. Javante Payton had two of those touchdowns. That game will be played at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio and also streaming on ESPN+. Plus. Bring your costumes. Danucci and off the hand of Gordon. So far, the receivers for Seattle obviously would have been a difficult catch, a little bit out in front and a little bit high for Josh Gordon, but that's now really four balls that have touched receivers' hands that ended up incomplete they're going to have to either change their gloves or take their gloves off if this continues to become a problem now second and ten gordon comes back for it greg williams the defensive coordinator speed 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 all right santos find a find a receiver let's go all right here we go i want cheat the back okay cheat the back strong safety single but now Watch 43 in red. He's coming. Ball, Santos is going to find somebody. It's cheap to back. 43 is right here. Danucci gets rid of it. It's bobbled and dropped again. Jawan Green 
Young fails to secure it one more time. And the receiver is doing Danucci no favors. Ball is perfectly thrown. Gets out of his hands quickly. Got a full head of steam. If Juwan Green grabs that, man, it's a big play for the Sea Dragon. That's one that you absolutely have to bring in. And Juwan Green visibly upset on the sideline after that big missed opportunity. You see nearly blocked it. Takes a hop for Puka Williams. Fifty yard punch, six on the return. Oh, oh, oh. So much on the line for these guys. And in a big game, Juwan Green. Some missed opportunities. Good news is he's got three plus quarters to bounce back straight ahead. And that's one as a quarterback. You want to go over and, and look, he doesn't want to talk to anybody. He, he's harder on himself than anybody else would ever be on him. But hey, you go over and you build him up, man. Hey, we love you. Look at all the teammates now that know that he's distressed, know that he feels terrible. Going and picking them up. Hey, man, I'm coming right back to you. I need you today. I'm going to keep feeding you, and you're going to make the next one. That's for sure. So you just got to keep these guys staying positive. Tamu faked the screen. QB run, and he gets lit by Anton Brooks. Brooks played up the road of Maryland. Six-round pick of the Steelers in 20. Great recognition there. Tried to go with a little bit of a quarterback counter. He gets out to the right-hand side, and, and Brooks squares him up for a minimal game. So third and one for the league's best rushing offense. 141 yards a game on the ground. Abe Smith bottled up, and maybe. Got it. First down by Abe Smith, just enough. What a journey it's been for Abe Smith. He's primarily a defensive player at Baylor. New offensive coordinator came in. They gave him a shot. And he turned into an all-conference running back. Ta'amu pulls it back. Now floats it. And it's incomplete. You referenced the story for Abram Smith. Jeff Grimes became the offensive coordinator and Jeff Grimes offense at Baylor is really all about stretch zone and being physical in the run game and Baylor had had some undersized backs prior to Jeff Grimes arrival they were more spread they were trying to go with a little bit more of a Baylor style attack under our Bryles where they really want to stretch the field and have scatty backs they said hey we move him right. over let's see how he does Back first up. carry he goes for 30 <laughs> yards they're like yeah you're gonna stay there <laughs> Well, it's complete for a first down to Chris Blair, third in the league in receiving yards. And he said when they first asked him about it, Dave Aranda said, hey, you want to go over and play some running back? He said, I kind of like linebacker. Did I just lose my job? <laughs> Look at it as a promotion. He's getting paid to carry the ball. Here he is. And out of a shoestring tackle and picked up four when nothing was there. But Abram Smith would be at the top of my list when evaluating prospects that would potentially be considered by NFL teams because in his first three years at Baylor as kind of a spot player here and there, he played a ton of special teams, and he has position versatility. We've seen him play high-level linebacker. Now he's clearly proving that he can play high-level running back as well. So I would love to bring him to camp. Tamu delivers over the middle. Lucky Jackson. He's in! Touchdown, D.C. It's 
Sixth touchdown of the season for Jackson. And this is just a great job by Ta'amu. Look at the safety. That's Antoine Brooks. Watch how his eyes are in the backfield the entire time. He's trying to find the quarterback, trying to find the ball carrier. Next thing you know, that glance route goes right in behind him. And Lucky Jackson with a ton of speed, great playmaking ability, secures the catch, and he's off to the races. Just a great read by Jordan Ta'amu. Nice, accurate throw. And terrific explosiveness shown by the wide receiver. Jackson didn't have a touchdown first half of the season. Six touchdowns right. now over the last six Let's games. They go for two. Tom who floats one and he'll be taken down short. DC batting 500 on two point conversions now in the season. Let's get you down to Cole Kublik. Lucky Jackson, 11th reception of 20 plus yards this year. That leads the XFL. Tell me pre snap, what did you see from the covers? Why did you know you could score? I knew that I was uh, pressed down. I had to beat my man inside. And I knew the quarterback was going to put the ball where it needed to be. So I ran my route, made the catch, and do what I do best. Done the best all year. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody better, and it's not luck. He's got a 0% drop rate. Think some of those Seattle wide receivers <laughs> would take that stat today? I would say so. I think what's amazing, though, and, and Lucky Jackson, Chris Blair, both receivers for D.C., guys that, that wouldn't necessarily jump off the page. You read some of the names in the league. You say, oh, Martavis Bryant, Josh Gordon, Jacor Pearson, guys that had big-time success either in the NFL or at the college level. Meanwhile, Lucky Jackson and Chris Blair, guys that maybe you didn't know as much about coming out of school, haven't seen as much of, and clearly proving here on a terrific platform in the XFL to show that they can play against anybody just needed that opportunity. Live line has shifted. You see given five and a half now. See Dragons on the return take it up to the 25 yard line. Seattle's got a case of the drop sees here early. And some of the balls have been the tiniest bit off target if you're going to be extremely picky. That one, is it catchable? Yes, every single one of these appears to be catchable. But the looks are there and the receivers are open. Just got to make the play. Can't throw it any better. I don't know if the weather's playing a major role in this. I mean, some of those should be caught regardless. I understand the ball is wet, even though it's not currently raining. The sun breaking through for the first time. But any type of condensation on the ball can affect the tackiness of the receiver's gloves. But it's really more about concentration than anything. Here's Jawan Green. He gets taken out. Check it with Katie George. Well, guys, the equipment manager for the Sea Dragons has been really busy. He's been running back and forth to the locker room, bringing up new gloves for some of these receivers. Jawan Green has yet to change his, though. He just reeled one in there, too. And like we talked about a moment ago, if you're a quarterback, you can tell your coach, hey, I, I can't throw it any better. You would never tell anybody else on offense. You would say, hey, man, I'm going to keep feeding you. You're going to make a play for me. First play on this drive gets it to the guy that's dropped two already to get him started. Five-man pressure. And what a grab with one hand on the perimeter. And that's good for a Seattle first down, Jordan Vesey. Cole. Just wanted to let you guys see, and, and GMAC can explain this a little bit further. The rain has stopped. Weather's actually beautiful now. But, Greg, you can tell as a quarterback just by the discoloration on that football how slick it's going to be and maybe key how much heavier that football is going to be. That's the key. Is it's, it's really the weight more so than it is the stick. The ball is, is so well de designed now where a little bit of moisture actually makes it tackier, but the weight is a little thrown off, so it causes it to occasionally wobble as it comes out of the quarterback's hand, which ultimately makes it more difficult for the receiver to bring in. Back-to-back -back catches by the former Cal Bear, Jordan Vesey. This was pretty tight coverage here as the defender broke on it quickly. But Santos Maria is just a half step late, which allows Vesey to turn, catch it with his body, and make the completion. 16th play of the game for Seattle. They've thrown it 15 times now. That's Jacor Pearson out of Western Kentucky and Ole Miss. Sometimes you, you look at Seattle and you think about June Jones. 
think about all these different styles of offenses. You mentioned 16 offensive corner, snaps. I think all corner, 16 corner, corner. have been some variation of empty wide receivers. Wide receivers need to pick up the game for Seattle. They've been better on this drive. It's an early D.C. lead after Lucky Jackson took it to the house. Back for the second quarter after this. And it comes in white glove service. One of those people is Evan Diaz. He's at the base of the cup, Cole. Evan Diaz, the head of the beer snake. It's become an Audi field tradition. Evan, this is your job each and every week? Basically, <laughs> I love it. What are the challenges in the weather with the beer snake? How much more difficult does it make it? None. Weather is nothing. I will, I will do this rain or shine. In the snow, I'll do it. What are the penalties for a beer that's not completely finished that someone tries to put in the snake? Penalty for an unfinished beer? They have to finish it before they put it in. That's the standard. It has to go down. Sorry, what was that? That's the standard. It has to be finished? Yes. All right, there you go, Tom, Greg. You can see. We got it going here. It's cold as hell. Four or five rolls. Does he need any help? Let's go. Does he want our help? How about Captain <laughs> Obvious right here? <laughs> <laughs> a bobble and it falls incomplete with a flag on the near side. That was Jacor Pearson. Six defense. Gotcha. Dan, we're going to go five yards from the previous spot. It's going to be an automatic first down. First down. It's DJ right. Swearinger that got flagged. 26. Gotcha. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 36. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. Hello, Captain Obvious. Oh, oh throwing shade on wow. the loo. Wow. Let's go. Rotate. Next. Next. Cause the law. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was not good anymore. It's not good anymore. It's not raining. There it is. Five-man pressure. Josh Gordon. Gordon's a big body. 6'3", 217. And a face full of sod. This Northbridge Bermuda grass is getting chewed up today. Did you actually look up what kind of grass it was? Indeed. Josh, yep, dig, great. Dig. Wow. Support that we have up here in the booth. Greg Campbell, Chris Capo. What is it rolling on the stem? The first ever North Division. It's rolling like a rolling like 11 or 12 on the stem. Oh, looks pretty like, slow today. Looks like some tight lies down there. Sidearm from Danucci and denied by Santos Ramirez. Jawan Green wanted a hold. This was nice coverage. It was a little contact there, but I like timing with the way Santos Ramirez arrived right there. Didn't feel like it was too early, so I'm, I think the official made the correct call by leaving the flag in his pocket. Third and six. The only run for Seattle came off of a pass play and a QB scramble. Danucci gets rid of it and a diving catch made. Blake Jackson's first grab of the game is a big one. And that's a heck of a play from Ben Danucci. Just buying a little time, three-man rush. You know you have time, but you have the late addition from the linebacker there, number 57, Anthony Hines. He beats him right before he arrives, allows his receiver to go make a play for him, and Blake Jackson reels it in for a big conversion. Jones has called nothing but pass plays this afternoon. This one works to Juwan Green. Spins free and takes it up the sideline. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds short of the first down marker at that spin move. And it leaves second and one. Great catch and run. They're continuing to just work a lot of these quick out routes, these quick passes that get the ball out of Danucci's hands, knowing the pressure is such a big part of what Greg Williams wants to be defensively. And they continue to just live in this empty formation, stretching that defense out as wide as they possibly can horizontally. Another one off the hands of Jawan Green. Another 
another quick pass. Clearly could feel the presence inside as the linebacker Davin Bellamy is closing quickly on that in-breaking route. Green had a huge game in the last matchup with these two. Week 8, 147 yards and two touchdowns. On third and one, Green is open. He goes the end zone, though. and hauls it in. Injured player is Kentrell Bryce for D.C. What an awesome throw here. Ben DiNucci, ball wiggles just a little bit. It's almost like a back shoulder throwing him away from the defender that was working in the receiver's direction. And how about the concentration on the back end by Jacor Pearson? Not catching it initially, but reaching out with that left arm, reeling it in before he goes to the ground to secure the catch. Just a really impressive catch there by Pearson, knowing that there was a ton of traffic in the back middle of the end zone. Bryce being helped off the field. Seattle is going to go for two. There are no kicks for point afters in the XFL. Seattle is five for ten one, on two-point conversions this season. You can choose one, two, or three. Here we go. 790. 790 on two. Ready. To reclaim the lead. Batted around and incomplete. D.J. Swearinger had the tip. Eleven thirty-eight remaining in the second quarter. Ben DiNucci's thrown for a touchdown pass. Rotamo has done the same, and we are tied at nine. Seattle and D.C. tied at nine. A trip to the Alamo Dome. In two weeks of the XFL championship on the line, winner gets Bob Stoops' Arlington Renegades. Jordan Tamu have an opportunity to answer. And Puka Williams has given D.C. good field position a time or two. Defenders have scored on each of their first two possessions, a field goal and a touchdown. Here's Puka. Looking for a hole. There it is! Puka Williams to the outside! And he gets tracked down at the 40-yard line. Bryce Thompson made the tackle. It's a 52-yard return and now a short field for the defenders. And this is now a couple weeks in a row in which Puka Williams has almost taken it to the house. Clearly here week 11, game 11, the D.C. defenders have figured things out with their kickoff return unit and see the speed on display there from Puka Williams. Hey, Philly yellow, Philly yellow, Philly yellow. Jordan Tamu fakes the screen, now goes over the middle into coverage, and it's intercepted! Sea Dragons take it back, Sharif Miller with the pick, his first of the year. Tamu got a little greedy. We got... Lemons on the field to the celebration. And they're trying to turn the celebration around. What Sea Dragons fan is thrilled. And it's a great job here by Antoine Brooks, number two. The safety breaking on it immediately, collisioning immediately. The ball gets deflected up in the air into the awaiting arms of Sharif Miller, who just reels it in and picks up a couple yards for himself. But that was all made possible by the great break in the back end by Antoine Brooks. Take go! Back to Ben DiNucci. And he 
finds Jordan Beasley. He got into Jordan Beasley a moment ago. That's it, boy. Let's go. Sharif, heck of an interception, first of the season. What'd you see? Hey, man, I was just, I was just playing the defense. I had to drop late, got out of there. Saw the uh, quarterback eyes. Number, uh, Swan and Uno made a good play on the ball. This game, too, now just try to catch it. Get the ball back for the team. You gonna make lemonade with those lemons? Oh, hell yeah. All right, lemonade, though. <laughs> Pearson with a first down catch. Sharif Miller played at Penn State, fourth round pick of the Eagles in 19. The limits came flying out of the stands, and he's got a memento. Get him away. He's doing shit. He's doing shit, man. Take go! First to 10 from midfield. They drop eight. Juwan Green squeezes it, turns it into a first down. Gain of 18. June Jones has called nothing but passes today. Trips left up. 861 Kansas Cube. 861 Kansas Cube. They start to get ticked off. You can hear right there, the defense starts to get a little ticked off. He's thinking pressure. So. When the defensive coordinator gets mad, you can expect blitz. That's what he's thinking, playing out in front of it. The Nucci lost his footing. He tried to plant, get away from the defender on the left-hand side. You see that left foot just slide out from under it. A lot of the guys have adjusted their cleats. Some have gone to a half-inch spike as opposed to a molded spike. Still difficult field conditions to keep your feet when you're trying to change direction. Comes a safety blitz. Benucci flushed and throws it away. Jamal Brooks brought the pressure. June Jones went down. Right they can there. access a little too far. Trying to get trying to get out of the way. <laughs> Glad he's okay. It looks like he kind of got tripped up. June Jones, a big guy, and a little worried about a little collision. It wasn't as bad as I originally thought, though, thank goodness. Seattle's four of six on third down. Here comes pressure again. On third and 18. Gordon couldn't get there, and it's incomplete. DJ Swearinger that close to a pick. Cameron Nizelec, second part of the game. Zero. They got to take a timeout. They call a field goal block, man, before they come out with the uh, field goal team. Come on. They have the right personnel on the field on the I D.C. Know, know, side of things. He's got all sorts of access on the rings, ground and the in the sky. Got. Sky cast of today's North Division Championship is available yeah, no, I, I, on ESPN Plus. Oh, it's sky oh, cam is a primary angle. Enhanced audio with live player and coach microphones. Yeah, that's I'm, pretty cool, too, I'm knowing that you can see it from that angle and hear now. both coordinators. So check. you're trying to play the game at home, trying to feel like you're playing Madden and listening to the play calls. It'd be a cool option to check that out on the plus. It definitely sound better than Tom Hart. I <laughs> yeah, can promise yeah, you that. Just or just mute this one. You'll be fine. <laughs> Nice elect to punt it away. Luca Williams had the huge kick return to midfield. And dives out of the way this punt return. And that's a beauty. Game back here at Audi Field, and you can see this 
little cleat pad that I'm bringing out here. One of the heroes of this game has been Van Dyke Jones, the equipment manager for the D.C. Defenders. You've been carrying that out for every timeout. How many more guys are wearing screw-in cleats than for normal in this game? I say every guy. Um, and this, normally guys wear molded cleats. But in these type of circumstances, with our grass field, we like to wear detachables. Got to make sure our guys can get good trash. It's a seven stud right, instead right. of normal molded cleats that, that are normally retail. Um, we're wearing as a non-retail cleat. Under armor, look down for us. After this play, we're going to talk the actual screw in one second. Right ready. Thank you. Tom and company backed up. They go with Abe Smith. All right, Van Dyke, this is the actual screw you showed me a little bit earlier. How much different is this than what the guys would normally wear? So normally, this has, this has a screw, like you said, a screw in. The normally wear is just already attached to the cleat. It's already a TPU. So then at the same time, this is a special cleat key that you have to do to actually screw them in. I would say about 10 years ago, a lot of guys are wearing these, but now because of less grass fields, everybody's wearing turf more, it's being used more. Is that time out? He got to go work. He's got to go. So Yeah, look at him. Got the pad. Out. Look at him go. There he goes. He took my, Ethan, true my screw and cleat, though. He's going to keep that, but it's okay. Ethan Wolf is the injured player for D.C., the tight end out of Tennessee. Kind of got rolled up at the end of that Abram Smith run. And he's a weapon for them in the passing game, too. You see number 82 right there. Kind of gets that left leg caught underneath the pile. He's walking off on his own power with a slight limp. Hopefully he'll be okay. With the grass field being as chaotic as it is, though, man, it's you cannot take for granted the importance of an equipment manager. I mean, as just the most underappreciated guy on the entire sideline, he makes sure everybody's all taken care of. So it's good to see that Van Dyke is getting the recognition he deserves. Second down, eight. Tamu, hold it back, find an option. We'll find Abe Smith out of the backfield, and that'll set up third and a couple. Episode eight of the nine-part XFL docuseries, Player 54, Chasing the Dream, premieres Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN2. It'll be available immediately after on ESPN+. Plus. If you missed an episode, you can catch up on the series. All previous episodes are on ESPN+. Plus. To get ESPN Plus, go to ESPNPlus.com or download the ESPN app. Chairwoman Danny Garcia. Let's go, red, 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 red. Present the trophy hey, post-game. Here we go. The winner gets red, Arlington. Red, red. Prior to the snap, delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Costly. Snap the damn ball, man. Snap the ball. Yo! Reggie Barlow, the head coach. Back, back it up, guys. Back it up. Ready, ready. Set go. Now third and seven instead of third and two. And another flag. Tahano trying to run for it. He got rocked. Oh, my God. Man, got he got knocked sideways. Gotcha. We're going to go five yards from the previous spot and repeat third down. The box man move. The box man move. Twelve men on defense. Twelfth man did not make it off the field. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat third down. Listen to the hit that Jordan Tahamu took. It was Bryce Thompson and Tarikas Tisdale, and Thompson is seeing the training staff on the Seattle sideline. That was a huge collision. Unfortunate because Seattle's defense was off the field. But they couldn't get that 12th man off in time, so. D.C. gets another opportunity to pick up this third down. Third and two, and the crowd engaged in a hearty lachiserie to the folks from Seattle. 6.04 left before the half. 
Last DC drive ended with a Jordan Ta'amu interception. Seattle's got two timeouts remaining. Also, either coach can challenge any call or non call at any time during the game. One challenge available each. Probably one of my favorite rules in the XFL is that one time challenge. It can be used at any time. You can challenge penalties. You can challenge catches, no catches, all the normal challenges that you would see in all the other forms of football. But being able to challenge penalties in an imperative moment has been something that has been huge throughout the XFL. And the strategy surrounding the coach when to use that challenge has also been fascinating to learn. Third down two. Run around it. Tackle. Traded penalties. Here's Abe Smith. Needs two. And good enough for the first down. And that's really big right there. And it's an unforced error from Seattle. Trying to substitute there prior to the third and seven. The defender as he's coming off the field. You see number 44 right there. That's Elijah Ponder. Doesn't quite get off the field in time before the ball is snapped. It gives DC new life. Tamu finds Josh Hammond. Seattle said it was incomplete. Dean Blandina looking at everything all times. They take a peek. Does the ball hit the ground right here? It looked like the nose is coming down just a hair. Field is a completed pass. The previous so play is under ground. further review. Exit ball command center up and right. Who ruled on that? Okay. Tough to see if he's if got a hand underneath. Gotcha. Now, I'm, looking, I'm, I'm trying to find the ball on the ground loose, and what I'm looking at is the left hand right here underneath it, right hand off of it, but then we're going to, yeah, which shot is that? That's my hand, L1. Okay, Reggie, I'm looking at it. It's close. Again, I see that hand underneath right there, and maybe at the end, it's tough to I need another shot at the end. It might scoot out, but I just don't see it. Just don't see it. Okay. A after review, stands, stands. We just don't have enough. Yeah, that's how the sausage is made, folks. After further review, the ruling on the field stands is called completed pass first down. So cool, the transparency that's been used with Dean Blandino. In the 42 games now in the XFL, him being there for every single one, making decisions go. like that in an efficient and timely manner. Ready, ready. It's been go. amazing. For the Dean league. can't call him sick. It'll shut everything down. <laughs> the most important person in the XFL, no doubt about it. Tomo just five for nine to start this game. Two weeks. When it gets Arlington, Bob Stoops and his squad getting primed for the XFL championship at the Alamo Dome. 17 gangster, 17 gangster. Ready, ready, tackle. Seattle again late getting a guy off. Another flag for 12 on the field. Right. Right. Abram Smith turns his way to about a seven yard game. Okay. You know. okay. Reggie, we got 12. We 12. Got 12. 12, Reggie. 12 How does this keep happening? Just late substitutions. I mean, oh. it's great awareness by Ta'amu, yeah. too, snapping the ball quickly before Going the defender can get off. Spot. That one wasn't even close. As Sharif Finch is still on the numbers when the ball was snapped. 12 men on defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot, second down. If you have no chance to get off, you might as well just turn around and make the tackle. <laughs> That's I, I, right. I mean, why not? I'll give him a choice. <laughs> In the college game, there's a little bit of grace when you're coming off the field if you're outside the numbers. None shown here. Twice in Seattle. Here we go, here we go. Flag for having 12 on the field. Run ready. Tackle. Dave Smith again. 
Fred Kaiser's first job as a head coach was Southwestern oh. High School in Baltimore. Texas 1990. bunch left. Texas bunch left. Let's go again. 23 duo bubble. 23 duo bubble. Hand do off it. inside left here. Here we go, here we go. Dave Smith. Run, run it. Back up. Dave Smith, second effort, picks up the first down. And and Fred Tice is just a remarkable story. You referenced his background dating back to his time in Baltimore as a high school coach, but guy that has primarily lived in HBCU football and has done a remarkable job of bringing that college-style offense now to the XFL, ready, ready. and the results Back have been up. terrific. Tom with a throw on first and ten. And we got a flag. Looks like a face mask. This is our skipper. Hold up. What is Sack that? leader for Seattle. Also 5 51. Got it. Yep. Previous spot, of course. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 51. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. took over in 1990 and now shuttered Southwestern High School up the road in Baltimore. They hadn't won a game in three seasons. Here we go. And he was one of only three white people at the school. Right, right. The team boycotted. He had 18 players and was able in two years to turn it around and have a winning season. And then he went on after Southwestern High School to Morgan State, Southern Tennessee State. You mentioned all the HBCU background. At Hampton, a couple of national championships. And he's back with Reggie Barlow, who he served under at Alabama State from 2010 to 13. Ready, ready. He's out of coaching a few years when Barlow reached out. His wife was the first one to encourage him. She said, you got to get out of the house. Get back to coaching. <laughs> so you're miserable, but he's one of the more unique personalities I've really been around in, in coaching a guy that is an ordained minister and also a plumber, a licensed by trade, plumber, a licensed plumber. <laughs> Just a, a really a cool guy that has done a great job with the defenders offense. So he can get, it, get out of the muck and well, if you can't, then he'll pray sit for you. Down and pray yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> Two minute warning. We are tied at nine at Audi Field. Well, the trip to the XFL championship on the line. Time to jump on the live line. Here's some information you might want. D.C. minus two and a half. Michael Joseph, the best defensive back for D.C., is out for the remainder of the game with a groin injury. He leads them with four picks in the season, and they're facing the league's most prolific passing offense. Would that encourage you to go one way or another? I, I kind of like the points coming into the day. I might even like them a little bit better right now. Seattle still has a case of the drops a little bit, so it's tough to totally right. hop on board. Draco. Toss to Smith, and now gives it back to Tomo. The flea flicker is a wobbler incomplete. Tarikis Tisdale kind of blew that thing up from the beginning. And an interesting call there by Fred Keist, the offensive coordinator. On third and two, I mean, deciding to try to take a shot over the top. I love the design. You pitch it, and then you hand it off back. Right, stack, clearly stuff. thinking they're going to go for it, and that's exactly what they'll do. Five of eight on fourth down this year. You got to think they'll go, be go. running the football. Man, Smith's been really good on these short yardage. Expect him to hit the hole 100 miles an hour on the right, right side of the offensive line. Pulled it back and deliver a strike. And a first down to Alex Ellis. Rick Heiss rolling the dice. <laughs> I like what you did there. That makes sense. Good job there by Jordan Ta'amu. Not handing it off on the run play, but instead opting to pull it back on the RPO, the run pass option, to deliver it against soft coverage for the conversion. Ta'amu looking down the sideline. It is incomplete. No flag. Mikel Wright had the coverage up Brandon Smith.
was definitely some contact at the top. As you can see, it does look like Michael Wright was trying to turn around and trying to play the football. So even though there was contact, the defender also has the right to go after the football. I think it's a good no call there by the officials. Second and ten, pressure. Out route complete for the first down. That's Lucky Jackson again. Obviously, given the firepower of Seattle offensively, being mindful of the clock as your friend is a big time throw from Jordan to Amu from the far hash on the speed out on time around a defender. And a nice completion there, but to start bleeding the clock here a little bit, you certainly don't want to give Ben DiNucci too much time to steal some points of his own. 14th play of the drive. And a little bit low to Smith. Flex left, flex left, 17, gangster, flame, 17, gangster, flame. You hear that play, 17, gangster, that's the run play, flame, that's the pass play. So this can be either based on what the defense does. Hand it off to Smith, and the first man got him, it's Bryce Thompson. And a huge stop for the former Tennessee Volunteer. A great job there on the perimeter by Bryce Thompson. So hard to tackle Abe Smith in the open field, but he goes low against the big back and makes the play. Three years of Knoxville playing for head coach Jeremy Pruitt. Tom it's tipped and it is intercepted. What an incredible play by Antoine Brooks. Flag flying in and Brooks takes it all the way back. Pass to 25. Tip drill led by Tyrell Adams, and somehow Brooks contorted his body and kept his eye on the football. Two picks for Tomu. They both come on tips. 15. What's that number? After the during the return. Personal foul, illegal blindside block by the intercepting team, number 58. Penalized half the distance to the goal. Seattle keeps the ball, first and 10. This is one of the greatest interceptions you'll ever see. This is unbelievable, and I'll tell you what, man, Antoine Brooks is having a whale of a game. Great deflection in the front by Tyrell Adams, but look at the concentration by Brooks as he's trying to hang in the air, reels it in off his leg and secures the catch. Just a ridiculous play from the safety. You can make this strong case. He's been the best player on the field so far for either team. Two-time all-conference selection of Maryland. They hand it off for the first time to Philip Lindsay, who hasn't been on the field all game. And the former Bronco, who may be headed back to Denver as a free agent, gets taken down for a loss. Play cl uh, The game clock rolling under 30 seconds. And number 55, Chris Owens. The right guard limping off the field as well. Something to keep an eye on on the right side of the offensive line. Seattle doesn't seem to be in too big a hurry. With... And Danucci has five seconds left. Lindsey. And that's how the first half will come to an end. Two Jordan Ta'amu interceptions off tip balls and the second one coming to Antoine Brooks what a play he's with Katie George Antoine can you just walk me through that play what an unbelievable grab um, honestly we've been working out um, their plays you know just trying to uh, run through make sure we know what we're doing eyes is more important in, the, in this game that's what's going to win the most is definitely um, uh, the grab was just spectacular. I don't really know. I'm just playing football. Uh, I thank God for it. Thank my family for it. You know, it's a real hype game, and that's probably what made me happy. <laughs> made me play play. Uh, I'm so tired, but I ain't tired no more. But I, I don't blame you. Getting that kind of stop, going into the locker room. What kind of momentum does that give this team moving forward? Uh, the turnover margin. 
you know, we win the turnover battle, we might win this game. Most likely to win this game. So that's just football knowledge, honestly. Thanks for the time. Nah, thank you. Antoine Brooks is an amazing story. His senior year of high school, he suffered a compound fracture in his ankle. They had to stop the game for nearly an hour. Then he went through five hours of surgery to get back. 15 scholarship offers he had at the time, they all faded. And only a late push from DJ Durkin got him to Maryland, and here he is maybe having the half of his life. That was a ridiculously good half from him. I mean, just so good he referenced in his interview with Katie, his eyes, how he's using his eyes, how he's trying to see the whole offensive set. Man, he's been unstoppable. Antoine Brooks with the pick, and it's a low-scoring game. Under may have been the play due to the weather, but perhaps more so due to the defense. We'll take you in both locker rooms. XFL halftime coming up. Take you back to last night's playoff game in Arlington in Houston and Luis Perez was magnificent through for 289 and three touchdowns all of those came in the first half Devontae Payton with a couple of touchdown catches that was a big one it felt like the backbreaker and Arlington would hold on the Renegades defense by the way only allowed 104 passing yards one of the best passing offenses in the league and even the Bob Stoops team was a seven and a half point underdog they end up Winning it outright by 15. In two weeks, we'll crown a champion for this year's XFL season. Saturday, May 13th, 8 o'clock Eastern on ABC and ESPN Deportes. Arlington will await the winner of this one. We'll be live in the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, also streaming on ESPN+. Plus. Well, early in this game, the weather was an issue. Tom Hart alongside Greg McRoy, plenty of drops from the Seattle side. But late in the half, it was Jordan Thomas' two big mistakes that thwarted D.C. opportunities. And it was great defensive plays by really both defenders that created the interception, deflected passes that were up in the air, and then obviously Sea Dragon defenders being able to reel them in. The big thing, I think, for D.C., they have to get back to trying to run the football. They're a team that wants to live along the line of scrimmage. They have the yeah, best know. running back in the XFL. And right now he's averaging two yards a carry in the first half. And you heard Abe Smith tell Cole they got some new plays in. Try to get those installed in the second half and see if they can get that run game going. But not much of a run game for Seattle. They only ran it with Philip Lindsay a couple of times. And that was just to run out the clock at the end of the half. Mentioned the drops from the Seattle wide receivers early, really their own worst enemy, but then they were able to clean it up. It's today's game flow brought to you by Progressive. You gonna kill him. Hey Green, you gonna kill him. Hey, Danucci, you gonna kill him. Good drive, good drive, good drive. Fucking no, let me do my job, you do yours. Chill out. I am. Well, there's a lot on the line, not just the trip to the XFL championship, but these guys trying to look as good as they can on tape and everybody taking a little bit personal now. Absolutely. And this, obviously, for the loser, this is the last tape that the NFL scouts will look at. So it's obviously the most important, let alone the championship berth on the line. Here's Puka Williams Jr. Former Kansas Jayhawk tripped up out to the 22 yard line. Let's take a look at today's progressive first half stats. Ground game non-existent for Seattle, but more important to D.C. as you mentioned. Of course, it's who they are. And, and D.C. has done a good job. And Jordan Ta'amu's made some good decisions with plays that were called runs that he ultimately ended up throwing because of what kind of coverage he got. So they're just going to have to, I think, call hey, some more right call it and run it runs long. without the RPO adjustments off of it because right long. now they're just not as committed as they need to be. And in the final 30 minutes, here we go, here we go. they need to get back to kind of being who they are and, and the bread and butter in the run game. Remember, when Seattle has the ball, D.C. is without its top defensive back. There's the run game, and Abe Smith gain of five. Oh, 
Total was 49 coming what is in. What Bradley, Bradley. What is it? Thunder. Thunder, thunder. It's Underneath. dropped to 41 and a half. Okay, here. No gain, third down. What? Game's empty what? What's the, what's the play? 50, 51 Cleveland Weston. 51. Let's go. Game's empty. No, no. Hey, Bradley, run it, Bradley. Let's go. <laughs> Bradley Moore helping out with the communication. Here we go. Pretty, Here we go. pretty we go. good for the tight end to be able to call the play like that. Run ready. There you go. Quarterbacks think you're so special, don't you? <laughs> Tamu delivers that one on time. Chris Blair for the first down. I'm just proud of uh, Bradley Moore right there being able to echo the play because usually these guys are listening for their one section. So all Briley's listening for is why stutter? Because that tells him what to do, not the rest of the play in the bigger picture, but a nicely delivered throw right there on the curl and a good conversion for the D DC defenders. Pressure from the edge, they go the opposite way. This is Blair again. And Blair gets taken down after a gain of two. Fred Kais sends in the play call. Spread right, spread right, yellow, rocket, yellow, rocket. Here we go, here we go, let's go. If they back it. He can communicate all the way through the play with his quarterback and skill position guys. To Blair again, and there's a drop. Michael Wright had the coverage. There's a well-thrown football on the comeback. Just a touch late, which allowed Michael Wright to break on it and to create the collision. Either way, a ball that one of the best wide receivers in the XFL go, go. would reel in nine times out of ten. Four-man rush to Amu. Over the middle! And there's a flag. Lucky Jackson taken down by Chris Payton Jones. Pass interference. Let's just get a Defense spot. number five. Spot of the foul. Automatic first down. As you can see, the defender getting there really early. That was an easy call for the back judges. Chris Payton Jones is a well thrown football. And if he hadn't closed that gap, it's likely a big completion regardless. Hey, squirrel. Spot of the foul, 28-yard gain. Last two possessions for D.C. have ended with picks. And just a hair wide for Alex Ellis. Spread right, spread right. Red, why Cleveland? Red, why Cleveland? This is a very simple play. You're going to run the tight end right here. He's going to run to the middle. You got a curl flat and you got a wide right here. Very, very simple curl flat concept. Rain has started falling again. Goes the curl and that's a gain of nine to Briley Moore. Pardon me, it is a first down. Good timing on that throw from Ta'amu. Getting it to... Riley Moore here we go, here we before go. those Let's two go. inside linebackers collapse, which allowed him to spin forward and ultimately pick up the line to gain. Right ready. There you go. Abe Smith now. Pick up a four. Next choice. Yellow, 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 yellow. What is yellow? Yellow is a protection. You, go, they have red, blue, yellow. Right yellow right. is a protection that tells Let's the go. back you have to pick things up because you got to be slow coming out. And a first down throw to Chris Blair. And Tamu has found his rhythm now. So you hear red, that means the back is staying in. You hear blue, 
That means the back is going to exit in yellow. The back can exit, but he's got to block first, meaning like when you're going through a street light, Tom. When it's yellow, I know you hit the gas I and just you go, go fast, faster, yeah. But no, Some you, you should be a little bit more cautious as you approach that intersection. He picked up the blitzing Antoine Brooks. Ready, ready. Take off. Tamu, Ooh. hand in his face, gets rid of it. And up and over goes Briley Moore. It'll be first and goal, D.C. It looked as Briley Moore went down, did the ball cross the plane. Tremendous effort. Where's the ball? Ooh, it's going to be really close. He might have as he was going down. It's a great look right here. Tremendous job. Where's the ball as he makes contact with the ground? Of course, they're going to look at everything. Ready, ready. Take DC doesn't get much time. They run it a first and goal, and a bounce to the outside for Abe Smith. He's in. And DC takes the lead. This is really nicely done by Abe Smith. Felt a lot of presence with white jerseys inside. Decides to bounce it to the perimeter. And he finds pay dirt for the first time today. League best eighth rushing touchdown of the season for Smith. Capping an 11 play 78 yard drive. Now they'll go for two from the five yard line. Ready, ready. Set, go. Tom who fires and it falls incomplete trying to thread the needle to Blair. Abe Smith said he wanted the ball, call my number, and he took advantage. And a terrific opening drive of the second half for the D.C. defenders, doing it through the air. Little help with the penalties. And Abe Smith, the leading rusher in the XFL, pays it off as offensive coordinator Fred Kais loves it. Boy, when we're finished here, coverage begins with baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. Phillies in Houston to take on the Astros. There's also an Michael K and A-Rod broadcast on ESPN2. Coming your way on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. Phillies have won the first two in the series. Go for another win tonight. The beer snake is climbing. It is growing. And I volunteered our services to do our part to help the growth of the beer snake, Greg. They... Uh, Warm best we couldn't do it on the clock. After the game, I'm going to contribute at least three or four to the beer. <laughs> it's just going to be at Reagan Airport. Here's Calvin McKnight. And McKnight gets taken down. Abe Smith with the touchdown run a moment ago. Abe Smith, you wanted the football. You got it. I mean, that's it right there. Like I said, we're working up front. I think we're hot. So just keep me the ball. I'm going to make something happen with it. What's the celebration with the old lineman? You strumming yeah, the guitar? playing the guitar out there, baby. We having fun. It's a rock and roll party out there when we out there. Thanks, sir. No, nah, thank you. Great manners by Abe Smith in the midst of a heated battle. <laughs> ben DiNucci, 16 of 26 for 147 yards. One touchdown and one sack. DC rushes only three. Here's Jawan Green. And a gain of four. I need your credit card, Greg, because those go uh, $13 a popper for domestic, a dollar more for the fancy stuff. Do you get two for one or? We get a BOGO deal, yeah. There you go, yeah. Break out my hair as teeter coupon. <laughs> Man rush this time. Second and seven. Green, hold on to that one. No, it got taken away again. Juwan Green had it in there. Then Kentrell Price came flying over the top. That was a nice play there by Kentrell Price. Was beat initially. Ball is thrown beautifully. It's a really good throw by Ben DiNucci, but it just gets dislodged there at the very end. Nice job by Bryce continuing to rip away at that football and ultimately pulling it out of the grasp of Green. Third 
down seven. Greg Williams bringing pressure. Cover zero again. And incomplete. Overshot, Jawan Green. Three and out for Seattle. Recognized pressure off the left hand side. They dropped the deep at the bend with the slot receiver. Thought he could get it up and over the top, but the safety was there to make the play. Dangerous book of Williams back. In the 39. Fake right, came back. That lost the football. And the defenders lucky. The fall on it. Shit. That could have been devastating. Well, Puka Williams Jr. was trying to make something happen, and he almost made it happen for Seattle. Luckily, Jamal Brooks, number 20 in red, Right place, right time. And the defenders will go back to work leading by six. Team has been outstanding for your group tonight. Why has it been so successful today? Our offensive line don't get enough credit. Uh, Russ, our O-line coach, does a great job with these guys. They've been blocking well all year. And plus, you throw in A.B., he's a solid running back, and he's doing his thing. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Russ Aaronfield, the O-line coach. Kyle Murphy, Liam Ryan, Ty right, Clary, right. Liam Fornadell, and Demarcus Hayes. Quick shot from Tamu, and it's bobbled and ruled a catch on the field, now called incomplete. By the way, that's incomplete. DC hasn't won an NFL championship since job. Joe Passing Gibbs had all those big never, guys on the line. Got firm control. Bostic and Grimm, Jacoby and Schlereth. Takes a good O line. Yeah, it absolutely does, and a great play defensively there by Bryce Thompson, both him and Antoine Brooks today, the Take safety tandem for the Sea Dragons have played excellent football. Ready, ready. Take him. Here's Abe Smith out of the backfield. Hey, Tommy, of work. Maybe a gain of a foot. up the middle and a sliding catch made by Josh Hammond gain of 21 now this is an interesting route there by Hammond went with a little bit of a corner route it's a flood concept where you have you three receivers that are on the left right. side of the field he gets a ton of separation makes a nice catch here's Hammond again Gain of four for the Florida product. Spread left, spread left. Z under, X choice, red, red, red. Z under, X choice. Uh, Z under, X choice, you got the choice. Oh wait. So Brandon Smith, he has the choice. Pocket holds and Somehow the catch is made by Hammond. He's turned into a real weapon. Clarence Six was it close to breaking it up or picking it off. Three plays in a row, though, going in Hammond's direction. I feel like I should listen to Marv Albert say he's on fire. Three in a row. Hey, yellow, 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 yellow. Have you run yellow? P Map. Did you ever play NBA Jam? Uh -huh. Yellow, P Map. And that was probably a little after your time. You're an old man. <laughs> <laughs> Magic, Skiles and Shaq had to. <laughs> Wide open is Ethan Wolf. He's in. Touchdown, D.C. It is some kind of party here at Audi Field. They 
17,684 in the stands, and they're loving it. And it's a play they've run a few times today, and to be honest with you, Seattle's covered it beautifully, but they stick with it. You get those crossing routes underneath, just hoping that one of your tight ends breaks free because of a natural pick, and that's exactly what happens. As Ethan Wolf went down a little earlier with an ankle injury, clearly back to 100% as he got out to the open field. Tomo caught. Alex Ellis. Two more for the defenders. Beer Snakes going strong. The home team's leading. It's a 14 0 third quarter for DC. Power of Lemons. And beer cups and Jordan Tamu. Jordan, why have your tight ends been so successful, so open today? You know, they've been, you know, hard working since week one, uh, since training camp, actually. I think we got the best tight end group. Uh, they've done a good job blocking, and we told them, be patient. Their touchdowns are going to come. Uh, look at it. Yeah, they come. <laughs> They're coming. Still going. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Ethan Wolf with the touchdown. Alex Ellis, the two point conversion. Riley Moore also involved. Just see all the shallow crossers, defenders trying to pass them off. And it's so difficult when you have a tight end that's running full speed against a linebacker in Clarence Hicks, number nine. And an unbelievable throw on a little bit of a back shoulder. The defender back to the quarterback, knows he can't see the ball. Tamu allows his big tight end to make a play. Defenders are two point favorites. It's grown to 10 and a half now on the live line, thanks to Caesars and Philip Lindsay on the kick return. Get tired of hearing Greg's voice. You can go over to the Skycast in today's North Division Championship. It's on ESPN Plus. Sky can be the main angle and have enhanced audio, live player and coach microphones. Ethan Wolf. Seattle with three and out on its lone second half possession. Danucci this time is able to connect with Blake Jackson. You can see the line in this game bouncing all over the place. Pick them at halftime with both teams tied at nine. But clearly DC dominating the third quarter up to this point. Based on what we've seen from DC's offense, I'd like, like to take a peek at the total too because that total of 48 and a half, 49. That thing's starting to come into play, too. For 10 left in the quarter. Good, solid catch made by Blake Jackson after the first quarter drops. Pardon me, Jordan Vesey, excuse me. And Seattle's a team that's built to come from behind, so this game is far from over. Of course, with Ben DiNucci, arguably the most dynamic quarterback in the XFL and maybe the best core of wide receivers, in the XFL as well. They can certainly make this interesting as this game continues forward. Danucci, a Pennsylvania native, started his career at Pitt, side arms one in, and it's a fantastic grab by Jackson. Danucci was thinking about all the great quarterbacks who've come out of Pennsylvania. He's the first prep quarterback in PA to throw for 4,000 yards in a season. He's a great player and a great story. Didn't work out for him, was ultimately beat out by Kenny Pickett, who had a great game as a true freshman against number two Miami. Danucci realized his future was not going to be in his hometown school in Pitt. Transfers to Jane Madison and lights it up. Leaves the pocket, turns up field and lost his footing. On a dry field, that's probably a first down for Danucci. Dahl Brown calmed down. Third down five. We're almost there. Danucci pressured. Taken down. A DC sack with a host of defenders. Joe Wallace. It's a loss of 10 with Jamal Brooks.
They bring the pressure off the left-hand side with Jamal Brooks. The right, the left guard, Chris Owens, tries to save him, but he just can't. Doesn't get enough of him. Danucci ultimately makes Brooks miss, but the rest of the defenders' defensive line closes in and drops him for the big third down stop. Seattle takes a delay a game. They'll be punting for the third time in the last four possessions. The exception was at the end of the half. In the match. Oh, they're taking their time. Coach Williams, what was that call in the last sack? Well, I, it made me think about you on that stupid question you asked me at the start of the day okay, <laughs> on when, if I would pressure. So I would have to say yes. In other words, hell has been unleashed. <laughs> yes, it has. And right now, if you're keeping track, it's five to one pressure. Thank you, on Coach. On every call I've made. On every call I've made. He brings pressure all the time that sack was huge for DC folks know Greg Williams reputation head coach of the Bills 20 seasons at DC DJ Dwayne Johnson would have absolutely loved to play for Greg Williams coaching with a heavy heart today after the loss of his father-in-law longtime St. Louis Cardinal player and broadcaster Mike Shannon and DJ said I look forward to shaking this man's hand one day defense wins championships Love it. And they have. I mean, they've heated them up with secondary pressures, full all out blitzes, we go, we go. twists, games, you name it. They've thrown it at Danucci. And Greg Williams so far has been a step ahead, especially in the second half. Gain of one. Greg Williams, just his motor never stops, huh? He's feeling it. To put into perspective, five to one pressure to not ratio, that is an absurd number. <laughs> Absolutely absurd. Usually 30, 40%, but he's in the 80s. Second and nine incomplete. By the way, Tom, he came and found me for that interview. Came and grabbed me down the arm. <laughs> he was ready to let me know. Well, he owed you one because he blew you off at halftime last week. He was so mad. He didn't want to say anything wrong on camera. Heavy hearts today. Dr. Aaron Shannon, his wife. Lost her father, Mike, go, father Mike Shannon. So important to so many best fans in baseball in St. Louis and Cardinal Nation. Pressure up the middle. And a good grab by Briley Moore. Tom may have hurt his hand. He had pressure in his face, and as he was releasing the football, I think he hit the helmet. And that's so dangerous on the throwing hand. First punt of the game for DC and Daniel Whelan. And this will be a touchback as it carries into the end zone for Whelan. 60 yard punt. And a heavy penalty due to touchbacks. Tom will get looked at. Sea Dragons and defenders fighting for a chance to advance to the Alamo Dome and the XFL Championship in two weeks. So far, the second half's been all DC. Now that's the problem with the beer snack. If you contribute to it too much, then you're not in a position to help at one point just, and apparently you lose your shirt just a little yeah I, I, <laughs> just a little surgery it's no big deal just piece it back together it's no problem yeah tape it back together seattle's trying to get right they're trying to tape some things back together is this offense prolific enough that they can just start hitting their stride no doubt they're really really good at wide receiver and quarterback the one thing that they've had trouble with though they've had drops and they've gotten a little bit behind the sticks as the pressure from dc's defense has ramped up just a little bit. So I think it's going to be really important for Ben DiNucci and this wide receiver core to make sure the ball gets out of his hands quickly, that they secure the catch, tight turn, and get what they can because that pressure from Greg Williams, he's already talked about it. He's not afraid to, not afraid to be aggressive. You would imagine that heat's only going to ramp up as the game goes along. 
Dean Blandino, the command center, noticed 12 men on the field for Seattle on the previous fourth I'm saying right. we're going to talk over here. If you want to talk, we're going to do it here. Jim Haslett not at all happy. Reggie Parla right. had a decision to make. Okay. Right. You stand over the ball, right? Right. Well, the umpire does, yes. Yeah, the umpire stands over the ball. We, got, we don't have a chance to substitute. You better let us come on and off. He's fucking... That's I, a penalty you want to call. You said we weren't on the field. That's bullshit. Dean, you saw 12 men on the field okay. for Seattle. So, What's the result of now going backwards and uh, taking the penalty? So that's a previous spot enforcement. So DC has an option. They can take I mean, it and replay fourth down, which would set up a fourth and a half. Or they could decline the penalty okay. and take this and, 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 and let the play go, the result of the play, which would have been the punt. So it looks like DC is going to accept the penalty and would set up a fourth and a half yard. The, in, the box guys have first down on their markers, and maybe they just haven't changed it over yet. Correct. They, they haven't, haven't changed announced. it yet. Gotcha. Yep, exactly. And gotcha. they're about to mark it off. So the ball essentially will be placed five yards from the previous spot. So it'll be at about the 44 and a half yard line, Dean. 44 and a half, exactly. The line of scrimmage was the 39 and a half. It'll go to the 44 and a half. Line the game was the 45. Seattle had 12 men on defense. We'll enforce five yard penalty from the previous spot. It'll be fourth down and one half yard to line the game. So Reggie Barlow thought about it and they're gonna take that fourth and short. It's the third time Seattle's been flagged for having 12 men on the field. And obviously with a bruising running back here, you guys. Be ready, in Abe Smith, jump, even though it hasn't been his best game jump, running the football, the you got to assume you're going to get Abe Smith on a downhill run play here where he hits the hole at 100 miles an hour. I think Reggie Barlow was just saying they're, they're going to try to get him to jump. And if they don't jump, then they'll run the punt team on. Well, Fred Keist did tell us in our meetings this week they put in more freeze to attempt to do that. Well, if they can get Seattle to jump, what a huge advantage that will be. Got to get the change set up. Fourth and short. Would you go for it anyway, regardless? I would go for it. I would go for it. I have a big back that run the ball a little bit better in the second half. Seattle's defensive line hasn't been getting the surge that they've gotten in the past. I trust my offense, and I trust my offensive line, the best rushing team in the XFL. And here's another situation where you have a late substitution from Seattle. Able to get it off. Tomo now under center. And got everybody moving. And I feel like that late ad for Seattle added to the chaos in the jump. Encroachment. Defense number 53. The five yard penalty will result in a first down. And you look at the defenders, they're running up right here anticipating QB sneak. When a quarterback goes under center, that's their immediate thought. They're thinking short yardage, QB sneak. They're trying to anticipate that surge that the center's going to make. As you see, Fred Kice, the offensive mm. coordinator. Easiest first down he's ever called. So now we start the fourth quarter. Tom on a QB draw. The rumbles for a gain of five. She's our skip or the tackle. Obviously critical drive for Seattle defensively down 14. A touchdown here obviously takes that lead to 20, which would take it to the three possession game. And with the running clock, it would be difficult to assume that they would be in a position to be able to climb back in, knowing just not going to have that many possessions with the way the clock is formatted in the XFL. Second of five, caught for the first down, Josh Hammond. Of course, a field goal personnel. here is still personnel. a two-possession game in the XFL, even though it would be 17 points. Throw left, throw left, 17, Gucci, five. 
Flame, flame. 17, Gucci, flame. What's the Gucci part of it? Uh, not 100% sure, but flame is a handoff outside Second left. Side. Ready, ready. Thank you. And there's the handoff, Abram Smith. Cole, what he got on Gucci? Power Reed, quarterback reading the defensive end on Gucci. Oh, Abe Smith is hurt. Abe Smith is hurt, holding his right leg. The leading rusher in the league, being tended to by the athletic training staff. Man, you just hate to see that. It's been so incredible all season long. Gets to the sideline, kind of gets dragged down. You can see an immediate pain. Looks like he's up on his feet on the opposing sideline, though. Thank goodness. So okay, Puka Williams. The crowd too. Yep, Puka Williams now in at running back. He only has one carry all season. Fake to Puka. Tom has got his tight end backing out, and it's a little too high, but a flag. Austin Fowlu is going to get flagged. Flag. 48. We don't need this. We don't need this. We don't need this. We don't need this. And that's a foul against an official. We're going to enforce both. Uh, yeah, that's what we called. Thank you. We called it. Sharif Miller just keeps getting himself into trouble. Oh, we got 48 RPS. And this is a frustration yep. penalty. I mean, it's really late. Absolutely no reason for it. You have two steps to be able yeah. to pull off the and quarterback before you initiate the that's contact. Just letting the frustration boil over here in the last couple moments. There are the two C fouls Dragons on defense. the play against the defense. Personal foul roughing the passer. Number 48 will be enforced 15 yards from the previous spot. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 48. That's his first of the game. Will be enforced half the distance of the goal from the succeeding spot. It's first and ten. He just handed him 30 yards when he decided to tack on another 15 for kicking the flag. And they're headed towards the beer snake. And DC trying to take control of this game. Derek King has entered a quarterback. Tamu nursing that right hand. King hands it off, and they um, manage a couple. Cole, what's going on with, and now we got another flag. And Seattle having a meltdown. Somebody took a swing and just a deep lack of composure from Seattle. So we're going to go, we're going to go, listen, listen, talk to, we're talking to me. So we're going to go. We're going to go half the distance to the goal yes. from the dead ball spot, auto first, number 58. After the play, personal foul unnecessary roughness defense, number 58. Penalized half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Twelve penalties. On Seattle today, more than doubling their season average. Things are coming up, D.C. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. Seventh first down by penalty for the defenders today. Tamu's out of the tent. The play clock at one, they get it off. Cameron Harris bounces the outside and shoves his way down inside the one. 
Good finish there to the outside by Cameron Harris. Almost finding Pater. Just added to the roster last week. Was wearing a jersey in San Antonio with just the number 41, no nameplate. He joined so late that he took his physical on the bus when they arrived at the Alamo Dome. <laughs> said that he sat next to the offensive coordinator, went through all the plays, felt comfortable enough to hit, get him in the game here in the second week with the team. King hands it off. Harris leaps. He's in. Touchdown, D.C. And they may book another trip to San Antonio with just 11.53 remaining. A commanding lead. Good job at the point of attack as DC for the most part has put this thing on ice and with rain in the forecast. It's not rain and raindrops right now, it's rain and lemons. I think with a side of beer because the beer snake continues to grow to the point which has now taken a 90 degree left turn <laughs> at the top of section 137. <laughs> One point attempt for D.C. Abram Smith back in the game. Here's Smith straight ahead. Got that right ankle taped up. He might just crawl into the stands to celebrate. What a performance in this second half by D.C. They've outscored Seattle 20 to nothing. And they are ready to head to the Alamo Dome. and other mistakes and they trail big now to D.C. early in the fourth quarter. Jordan Tom who's been dealing with a couple of injuries in this game. Hit his hand on a helmet. Saw the athletic training staff trying to help him out with the pinky. What a scene here at Audi Field. Huh? Where else would you rather be? <laughs> Let's go. Here's Philip Lindsay. And before the game, Greg Williams telling Cole Kublik he's basically doing his best Wyatt Earp. Our guys have bought into everything we do, and hell will come. And it has. This D.C. defense has been suffocating and explosive at the same time. They've done a remarkable job in the second half, mixing pressures, making sure the coverage on the back end is really tight as well. They're just blitzing everybody. Good job! up with Arlington in the XFL championship game in two weeks. Danucci looking for Gordon. Nothing there. We'll be at the Alamo Dome for Arlington and the winner of this game on ABC Saturday, May 13th, 8 o'clock Eastern. What a finish of the season for the Renegades. Their offense firing on all cylinders now. And a midseason trade for a new quarterback. Luis Perez came over. And they've looked like a different team. Danucci deep down the sideline. Too strong. Like Blake Jackson stopped on that route a little bit. He's got a little bit of contact as he was trying to get over the top of the defender. Just couldn't quite make up the gap between where the ball landed and where he ultimately was. 861 on two, right? Be interesting to see what Greg Williams does here. He's been bringing heavy pressure, blitzing guys from all over the place on most of the third downs today. Does he do it here with a big lead? Yep, here they come. Josh Gordon. Former all pro receiver takes it out to the 30. Fourth and about four. And they'll punt it away. A little surprised that they're going to punt here. I, the defense is clearly gassed. 
defense kind of lost their composure on the last drive. The only chance you really have is to keep your offense on the field. So a little surprise they're opting to punt it away right here on a fourth and four. I know it's impossible field position, but then your back's against the wall anyways. Third punt of the half. Puka Williams. Here's Puka. 56-yard punt. Puka gets 21 back on the return. 9.51 left in D.C. Defenders leading 30 to 9. What need to do to kickstart this offense? We're just trying to stay locked in. We gotta, we gotta, we've been stalemate since the first quarter. We gotta be able to put points on the board. Their defense is doing a good job of just sitting back, not really letting us throw anything down the field. We've kind of beat ourselves a little bit here the second half. So we need to uh, get the ball back and try to get back on track as quick as possible. Thank you. Yeah. First half, Seattle had 138 yards. They've managed just 24 in the second half. They haven't scored since their third possession of the game. Punts and end of clock since. Abe Smith forward for two. We're curious to see if Fred Kice, the offensive coordinator with De'Eric King in the ball game, really the only way Seattle can get back into this thing is a turnover by D.C. I'd be surprised if they even try to throw it, unless it's something behind the line of scrimmage. I'd be just shocked if they if they tried anything risky here with a 21 point lead and under 10 to play. QB draw. Derek King stood up. Let's check in with Cole Kubelik. Cameron Smith, you joined this football team Thursday last week for a Sunday game. You were on the bus talking to the court office coordinator, trying to learn the system, the scheme. What were you doing before you came aboard? Uh, I was working at America Toyota. You know, I, was, I had a job, and D.C. gave me a car and says, I'm ready to play. And I told him, I'm ready to go. What was your go-to vehicle that you sold the most of? <laughs> the Crown. The Crown of Toyota. <laughs> Here's the best part, though. Turn around for me real quick. Check this out, fellas. He went, he got the name on the back of the jersey. Yes. I love it. You went from no name on the jersey last week to a touchdown this week. Yes, sir. I just want to give God the glory. I owe God everything. I've been out for 17 months. Every day has been eating me alive, and I'm ready to go. I'm hunting everybody down. Everybody's slutting on me. There you go, go, fellas. Cameron Harris, 41 last week, inverted the number and added a nameplate. He had a chance to return to the Alamo Dome with the name on the back of his jersey next week if they can hold on. D.C. forced to punt. You love hearing that story, too, from him saying a lot of people slept on me. I'm trying to prove them wrong. And this league provides the platform that so many guys, their career would end otherwise if not given this opportunity. So just a remarkable shout out to the XFL. Dan Whelan with a rocket and it carries into the end zone. Fantastic crowd here today. 18,684 taking in this experience. Not a home game for D.C. Winner of this one gets Arlington in the XFL championship in two weeks. And a Saturday night on ABC. A lot of people will look at that record next to Arlington's name and say, well, they're, you know, they're going to get boat raced. But man, they're a different team the last couple weeks. And defensively, man, they are built to stop the run. So it's going to be a heck of a matchup a couple weeks from now. Assuming this one goes the way we all think it's going to go in the next seven and a half minutes. Maybe it's the lemonades or the empty beer cups, but they are feeling it here at Audi Field as the wave works its way around. It's been a feel good story all day. Danucci over the middle complete. And a first down for Seattle to Jordan Vesey, a pickup of 23. Nice timing here from Danucci on the in-breaking route. Remember, in the XFL, you do have the option for the three-point play. So two touchdowns, two, point, two three-point play conversions, and a field goal gets you back into it. Obviously, you got to thread the needle, but still a chance. we got to make some big plays happen. Out of the backfield, Jacor Pearson lost his foot in gain of two. And as opposed to the onside kick rule, 
in the XFL, you can have a fourth and 15 play from your own 30 yard line. So Ben DiNucci and company might be on the field the rest of the game if they could convert some of these plays. On second and eight. DiNucci is able to connect with Blake Jackson out of Mary Harden Baylor. Blake Jackson followed Josh Gordon with the Cleveland Browns took his number 12 when Gordon was out of the league. He's been all over the place had to fight his way back from a torn Achilles. The biggest thing he learned was spiritual and mental strength when he had no physical strength. Danucci a pump and go wide open caught touchdown Jawan Green. One step closer to redemption after a horrendous first half for Green. A great play call from June Jones. Third and short. They're thinking, hey, just could take a quick completion for the third down conversion. Instead, they pump it and they go deep. And a great catch there by Juwan Green. As surprisingly, Seattle's opting to take a two-point conversion here from the five-yard line. Thought they might go for the three. Danucci buying some time. Incomplete. So 6.05 left, down 15. Danucci not happy with what he saw. Would you would you attempt the onside fourth and 15 play? It's really close. <laughs> Jim Haslett not happy with the decision making. Six oh five left. They're going to kick it away. Too early to go for a fourth and fifteen. Probably. I mean, the defense just had a nice stop a moment ago. Got the ball back to Danucci. They went right down the field. So you don't necessarily have to go for it just yet because they scored so quickly. Had that drive gone much longer, down under five into the fours in that vicinity, then you might have to start thinking about stealing a possession with the fourth and 15. Here's Puka Williams, and he leaves his feet. Greg, you played quarterback for a long time. I want to go back to that interaction with Jim Hazlitt and Ben DiNucci. Is this normal head coach quarterback interaction during a game? Absolutely, and, and look, emotions run high. I mean, the last play, even though you scored a touchdown, was a failure. So you're only as good as your last play. He wanted to know because an interception doesn't hurt you. You at least give a guy a chance. And Danucci was trying to throw it up, just threw it a little bit too far. I think Hazlitt thought he was throwing that away, which you would never do in a do or die two point conversion attempt. But that's par for the course. The back and forth is, is part of it. And it's not out of character at all. Jordan Thomas still out of the game. They try to sneak it in on a play action, and it's incomplete to Josh Hammond. Coverage by Bryce Thompson. They're throwing on first down. And it doesn't make a difference because of the incompletion because the clock still rolls. But it's a lower percentage play. It's also a riskier play. I mean, in the event of a tipped pass where it's batted up in the air, like two have already been today. And it can easily wind up in a Sea Dragons defender's arms. I thought it was pass interference, perhaps, and Reggie Barlow recognizing the value of it. Did Bryce Thompson get there early? And he's going to challenge, yeah. Steve Blandino looking at it. Thinking that, that, that the defender arrived a little early, and as a result, it would be a pass okay, interference. Okay, Reggie, I'm looking at it. Yep. Starting on my own 22, I do have contact at the 41-yard line. Has called a and in real time, it is early. Right 25 is a good move. It is early contact. Dude, yeah. I couldn't no, see I, it, but it sounded like the pass potentially may have been tipped. 
as well. Yeah, that, that's I'm the next sure. thing I'm going to check. I do have early contact. I'm just going to double check the tip potential. So if the pass isn't tip, we have a pass interference. No tip. No tip. So we do have we do have a successful challenge. It's going to be DPI Seattle number one. They'll keep their timeout. They're done challenges. Imagine the value of this. A false it's gonna Sundays. It's going to be the 41-yard oh line is your spot. Just 41 yard absolute line game changer. And honestly, it, it helps the official, too, Correct. because they're going to take the blunt of the criticism if the call is wrong. The but if you can correct it's it after the fact, it's great. Pass interference. The defense number one. Spot of the foul, automatic first down. DC has won the challenge and will not be charged a timeout. Possession extended for DC, 533 remaining in the fourth. Remember the last drive was extended due to 12 men on the field. That ended in a touchdown. That's the 11th Seattle defensive penalty. DC will run it with Abe Smith. This is that similar play that they ran earlier. It's a throw. It's going to start there, and then you work to a curl to the outside. So this is risky play here. Here they come. He's going down the sideline. And too strong for Lucky Jackson. Third and eight. Obviously, Fred Kais is seeing something that he thinks they can take advantage of. And you steal one there, right? I mean, it's a the likelihood of a turnover one, right there one, is essentially a punt. It's a low-risk throw with a potentially empty high reward. Left, so. Squirrel slants, empty left, squirrel slant. 50 squirrel slants. I want to wait. 52, 52, 52. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We got five seconds. Clock at one. They just get it off. There's a slant. Wow, what a hit. Elijah Holder is left holding his head. And he's got a couple of wobbly boots going to make his way to the sideline. Josh Hammond held on to it. Fourth and two. Big collision there. Pressure off the right-hand side. De'Ara King throws right into it. You see the tackle. Let's see here. Do they go with that hard count again that Seattle jumped offside with last time? There's the flags over the middle. Caught for a DC first down by Chris Blair. A 20 yard strike from De'Ara King. Good number. Offside. Defense number nine. The penalty is to climb the result of the play first time. Went up there, and as soon as the defender jumps in the neutral zone, the center has the right to snap it, even though it looked like it was one of their Alaska plays, as Fred Kais loves it. You get a free play, and it turns into a big one as King connects with the wide receiver. Abe Smith. Gain of three. Timeout. Seattle with 2.58 remaining. George Tamu has his helmet back on.
It's over. The beer snake is done. What a run, though, by the beer snake. Incredible <laughs> stuff today. I don't know if I've ever seen such dominance in a sporting event. What they accomplished with those cups. The organization as well as teamwork to get them into the recycling cans. Pretty impressive as well. It's all about community. That's it. And that'll go down with one of the great performances in professional sports history right next to the Jordan flu game and and others. It's a miracle on ice. A miracle on ice. Yeah, just one of those great moments. And the beer snake is no more here on April 30th. But my goodness. Cam on the 2010 about... Iron Bowl. Excuse me. <laughs> Play action. King. Wow, sensational catch. Made on the sideline by Brandon Smith. How about the hands? And great catch. And look at him get that left foot down. Goes to the ground immediately with the elbow. Great awareness of where he was on the sideline. Another nice high percentage completion where if it's incomplete or if it's covered, you just airmail it. It's no problem. Smith again. He went down a hero. It will never be forgotten. Let's not cry because it's over. Let's just celebrate the fact that it happened. Maybe that large anaconda snake just gave birth to a lot of little snakes. That's all <laughs> it is. I mean, it's the circle of life. Now, I just feel like that'd be a good souvenir for somebody. I'm just surprised they're so willingly throwing them away. They got to trade it back in to get their shirts back. <laughs> Here's Cameron Harris. Bounces out of trouble. Looks to the outside. Harris takes a wallop as he neared the first down marker. This is our skipper with the tackle. Good finish there, of course. Normally, you would give yourself up before you get to the sideline, but obviously with the running clock, it's insignificant as Seattle will burn their final timeout, being that if D.C. is successful on this third down conversion, they can kneel on it after the two-minute warning and put the game on ice for the most part. Luis Perez and Arlington and start game planning for D.C. XFL championship. Put that one on the gram. Shields up, Lemons out. I want to see some of the D.C. fans make the trip to San Antonio. See if there can be a beer snake in the Alamo Dome. I mean, you have to, right? Mm -hmm. Cameron Smith, left side, touchdown DC, Cameron Harris. Delirium in DC. Just a walk in with 
outside counter with some pullers out in front. Piece of cake touchdown there in the late edition. Cameron Harris out of the game for 17 months, but here in an opportunity to go to the championship game, sealing this one for the defenders. And the overcash is more importantly. Yes. Yes. That did not look likely when it was nine all at the half. And they'll cash in again with Cameron Harris. And the defenders are two minutes and six seconds from San Antonio. And a chance for a title. Six 30 point game of the season for the defenders, and they've cashed in the over in 10 of their 11 games. They will cover for the eighth time in 11 games. Really is an impressive performance, too, especially given how Seattle had played in the final nine games of the year. Eight and one coming in to today. Seven and one, excuse me, coming into today in their last eight games. Playing so well. Of course, massive win a couple weeks ago against St. Louis just to get in this position. Disappointing end to what was a pretty good season for Jim Hazlitt and the Sea Dragons. Here's Philip Lindsay, former Bronco and Colorado Buffalo. And he has a solid return. The serenade continues as the DC fans wave goodbye to the Sea Dragons. It's been a group effort for DC today. Cameron Harris from a Toyota dealership to the end zone. In the span, Danny Garcia, a chairwoman and owner of the XFL, posing with the hardware. She'll be handing it out in mere moments. 158 to go from a berth in the championship game. And the D.C. defenders with a commanding 12-point lead. Seattle's had an amazing season. They started 0-2. They were turnover prone. Then they figured things out. But... Even the littlest of things went wrong for them today. Drops from the receivers early. A host of penalties. Many leading to D.C. being able to keep their drives alive. As you can see, the penalty is a huge story in this game. Extending drives, giving D.C. additional opportunities to convert on third down, giving some free plays. And then a few that were really just composure penalties that led to the last touchdown that really put this thing away. First down catch and run by Blake Jackson. Danucci will uncork it deep down the sideline, and nobody is there. Both the receivers stop short, Gordon and Green. Second and ten. Ben Danucci, 26 of 41. 258 yards and two touchdowns. He's been sacked twice today. Which really is pretty impressive given all the pressure that Greg Williams has brought from the defenders defense. Wow, what a fantastic one handed grab by Jawan Green. It was like too little too late after the first quarter drops for this Seattle receiving core. I mean, great grab here though. I mean, make it look easy. And Green, of course, you referenced a couple drops early, but He's come on strong and responded well under the circumstances. First down grab for Jordan Vesey. 
One minute left. Two weeks ago here, Reggie Barlow's team knocked off Arlington in overtime. In a game in which they went in favored by 10. It was second biggest line in the XFL this year. I don't think it'll be that big in two weeks. There's Calvin McKnight. You could see that a game just a couple weeks ago was terrific. Where Arlington looked like it was going to be a runaway, and the next thing you know, you blink a couple times, they're back in it. And Arlington's defense has been terrific all year. They really held Abram Smith and that offense in check running the football. 17 in the fourth quarter by Arlington in that game to force overtime. Luis Perez put it in the air 61 times. He threw for 335 yards. Last ditch effort here for Seattle. Monday, 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 Monday. Down 22 with 32 left. Danucci's going to rumble. And he'll take it out of bounds after a first down run. What about Ben Danucci and his future? He's got a bright one. Obviously, things didn't go his way today, and the stat line will read at the end of it 30 of 45 for. Nearly 300 and a couple touchdowns, but he had a bunch of drops early on, probably at least five passes that likely would have been reeled in if conditions were a little bit better. I think he's absolutely going to be in a training camp here within the next couple weeks. Just a matter of where he decides to go. He's had a lot of suitors. Pressure from the edge. Danucci throws it out of the back of the end zone. But he just has some playmaking ability that you just can't teach. Now, with that playmaking ability, there does come no, some no, occasional no, no, no. risk. And there are plenty of examples in which he tries to do maybe a little too much. If you could just coach that out of him, and it felt like June Jones and company really did that. He played better, he made smarter decisions. He's going to be a risk taker, he's going to be a gunslinger, no doubt. But I think he's exactly what you would want as a backup quarterback in the NFL. He's got athleticism, he can extend plays, he can make off schedule plays, and he clearly has played at a, at a high level already in the past. Started one game for the Cowboys, lobs it to the end zone, and there's a touchdown to Jawan Green. It's a two touchdown game for Green. Four touchdowns this season against DC. Good protection up front. Not much of a pass rush from D.C. I think Kaiser just exhausted at this point. As he finds Green in the back of the end zone. The only thing that's affecting is the live line. Yeah. Seattle has gone for three more than anybody else in the yeah, league. Four. They've converted four of them. That one comes up empty. Now they got a chance to run a fourth and 15 play instead of an onside kick. It's academic at this point, down 16. We're going to do the onside kick. All right. Only 12 seconds remaining. You know, we're going to do the onside kick. Yeah. And on top of that, the clock yeah. runs during the fourth and 15. Glum faces on the Seattle sideline. Hey, be smart here. Don't get hurt. Nothing stupid. No people are probably reacting to that commentary. Like, man, you got to be kidding. Leave, you know, leave it all on the field. No, I mean. These guys, obviously, they want to win a championship. That's not going to happen for Seattle this year. But beyond the team goal, you also have individual goals. Those individual goals being to accelerate your own personal career and ultimately get into camp and fight for a roster spot in the NFL. So and that's coming from Jim Hazlitt all the way down, by the way, to make sure you're smart here. Don't try to be a hero. Don't do anything unnecessary. And, Preserve the right to go to camp with a clean bill of health. 
So fourth and 15 to keep possession. DC brings five. They go over the middle of Josh Gordon, and it falls incomplete. And DC will take over at the previous line of scrimmage, and the party can start if it wasn't going full bore already. I think Jamal Brooks might just take that football home with him. <laughs> what a second half performance from DC. Right their head coach, Ooh. Reggie Barlow, on the receiving end of a well deserved Gatorade bath. I don't know what that Under Armour fabric is, but it came off of him like water off a duck's back. <laughs> oh man, appreciate you, man. I love you, man. 7 11, bro. His quarterback, Jordan Ta'amu. Victory formation for D.C. And the defenders will play for an XFL championship. A 10 and 1 run for the defenders. And a dominating second half. Greg Williams, coach with a heavy heart, will have a chance to celebrate what's occurred on the field. This game was tied at nine and a half. Jordan Tamu had thrown a couple of interceptions off of tip balls, and then the third quarter they took over. And so we are set for a championship matchup at the Alamo Dome in two weeks. Saturday night, 8 o'clock Eastern on ABC, May 13th. Maybe a beer snake or two in the Alamo Dome. Let's go down to the field. Here's Cole Kubelik. I've got D.C. defender center Ty Clary. Ty, I know you guys came in wanting to run the football in this game. That was a stout defensive front, and you guys pretty much had your way. Why were you able to be so successful? Man, i got to give a lot of credit to that Seattle squad. They're really good up front. They have good linebackers. They're, they're good everywhere. Uh, i got to also give credit to our O-line, our running back, and our quarterback. I mean, we're trying to run the ball. Our running backs run as hard as anybody I've ever played with. Our receivers, they make plays all the time. I mean, when you can throw it over the top, you can run it down the middle. And when you can run it down the middle, you can throw it over the top. So, Not just that, but what was the strategy coming in with the freeze plays? Because you were able to grab about three or four different flags by being able to draw them off sides. You guys saw that in film this week? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's always in the game plan to get them to come offside. This week, we got them in a few situations where they maybe weren't ready or focused in. And, you know, we executed, uh, we executed well. Going to the championship game, how's that feel? It's pretty nice. It's, it's a cool deal. It's, uh, I'm pretty excited. I know everyone else is. It's a little bit bigger of a paycheck, so we're ready. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Ty Clary out of the University of Arkansas, and the championship T-shirts are there. Abe Smith wanted the ball in the second half. He got it. Ended up scoring a key touchdown in this game. How about D.C. overall offensively, Greg? Really solid. They did have some self-inflicted mistakes on tip passes that resulted in interceptions, but the RPO game, this was a big play early on where Ta'amu read the defense beautifully and hit Lucky Jackson on the in-breaking route. Then the run game got going in the second half. Abe Smith finds the perimeter. Ta'amu then underneath, finding Ethan Wolf on the shallow cross where he's completely wide open, takes the distance. And then Cameron Harris does the rest as he puts the game on ice with a couple late touchdowns. You deserve it, Colt. Man, we deserve it. We. Thirty-seven twenty-one. It's another thirty-point game for the defenders. They suffered just one loss all season, and it was a shocker. It's an Orlando team that had been struggling all year. Alex Ellis and the D.C. tight ends. 
were fantastic today. Riley Moore, the other tight end leading receiver, four catches for 80 yards. Wolf had a touchdown catch, and Alex Ellis celebrating on the sideline. A lot of emotion for this D.C. team. Best team in the league all year, and now they face a red-hot Arlington team with a chance to win an XFL championship. Danny Garcia was in Houston yesterday handing out a trophy. And the chairwoman and owner of the XFL has a chance to do the same thing today. She's with Katie George. Thanks, Tom. All right, it's time for the North Division Championship trophy presentation. A big congratulations to the D.C. Defenders. We're here with the XFL owner and chairwoman, Danny Garcia. Danny, it was your idea to buy this league. You had the vision. As you stand here ready to crown the North champions, what makes you most proud? Oh my, <laughs> these boys, this league, the vision to unlock the dreams that football makes possible. And that's about our coaches, our athletes, it's about our fans. I am so excited, I'm so moved to be here. I am so proud of all of you. I'm proud of all of our teams and what they've given. And I'm so happy to say, coach, Congratulations. Thank I you. want to present to you the 2023 XFL North Division Championship. What a complete performance. What impressed you most about the second half that your team put together? The first two drives. The uh, offense got the ball, uh, was able to drive it down, score a touchdown, and then defense went out and got a three and out. Uh, those were two real big possessions. Our fans were outstanding today. We so appreciate our fans. How about that? Why is your team capable of winning an XFL championship? I mean, these guys are made from the right fiber. Uh, they're uh, not selfish. They love each other. They care about each other. Uh, they've done the work all year, and they haven't complained. Uh, close niche, and uh, I'm just happy and humbled to have an opportunity to be their coach. I'm extremely proud of them and our coaches, our trainers, our director player personnel, Vaughn Hutchins, uh, Miss Stacy uh, Johnson, our team operation. We got to thank everybody because without those people, our trainers, you know, everybody's done a, re a great job. Uh, but how about these players? Congratulations. Jordan, you and your teammates certainly know a thing or two about winning. How does it feel to know that you're going to play for the XFL championship in two weeks? You know, uh, first and foremost, I just want to thank uh, God for, you know, giving us this opportunity to be here. Um, shout out to D.C. We're undefeated right here at home. Let's go. Hey, let's go. Hey, shout out to the team. Shout out to everybody. It's a, it's a team effort. Everyone's done their job. We focus on details every week, and uh, we go out here and win games. That's, our, that's what we do. How's the hand? Hand is good. Uh, I'm going to use these two weeks to get right and uh, get that championship. Congratulations. Enjoy this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. We hope to see the beer snake in San Antonio in two weeks' time. Congratulations to the D.C. Defenders. Tommy. I want Katie as my hype man. The trophy <laughs> will live here in D.C. North Division champs will have a chance to earn another one in just two weeks on a Saturday night in San Antonio on ABC. It's going to be an amazing game. Can't wait to see exactly where Vegas sets the line. Of course, a couple weeks ago, 10 points, the spread between Arlington and D.C. I think that number probably going to come down a hair. I'm guessing seven and a half will probably be where it falls. I'll tell you what, with how Arlington's playing, though, since Luis Perez's arrival, they now have a really good passing attack to complement the run game. But D.C. is the best team in the entire league and it would be a surprise to me based on how they played in the last 30 minutes of this ball game if they get denied the opportunity to win the championship two weeks from tomorrow or two weeks from yesterday excuse me 
Well, this has been a fantastic run for Seattle, but it comes to an end tonight. And what an amazing atmosphere here at Audi Field in our nation's capital. We are set. We will see you in San Antonio. Coming up next, it's baseball tonight. D.C. with the win with a dominating second half, 37 to 21 for Greg McElroy, Cole Kubler, Kitty George, our fantastic crew. I'm Tom Hart. Let's get you to Nicole Briscoe with Jess Mendoza and Tim Kirchin. It's time for baseball.